Hey everyone, this is Dalia Abdullah, the Handmade Mastermind, and in this video I'm going to show you how I use Marmalade, the entrepreneur plan, for um, SEO, keywords, and all that good stuff to really help my listings. Okay, I'm really excited to show you this. I'm going to walk it through um, step by step. Um, so you really could understand it. Now, if you're interested in using the entrepreneur plan, um, I am putting a link down below for you um, that will give you 14 free days to try it out and test it for yourself. Okay. So of course I already have the entrepreneur plan. So I'm just going to go ahead and log in. Okay. So after um, I log in, I want to kind of walk you through some basic things before I go into detail. Right now it's kind of analyzing my shop listing. So this may take a minute or so. Um, but just so you know, when you do have the entrepreneur plan, even the free plan, you're able to add more shops. So you could hit manage shops and connect another one. So this is what I love about this. Um, so the entrepreneur plan, you could pay monthly for it. And of course, a lot of us have more than one shop, and so you don't have to pay monthly for mul multiple times, right, for multiple shops. You could pay monthly once, right, the $19 a month, and you're able to connect all your shops in here. I currently have uh, two very active shops and one not so active, so I could connect all three of them. Okay, so this would save you a lot of money, obviously, if you want to connect more than one shop, which I absolutely love. Okay. Now, if you go back to the listings, this is what you first see when you log in. Obviously, you'll see your own products. This is mine. Um, but you'll get these little grade um, scores on all your listings. Just for the record, not only will you see a grade, you'll see a color. Um, and you probably can guess, but the green is good. <laughs> the reds um, are bad and anything in between, it just depends what it is. So if it's like a yellow, it's closer to green. So it's not so bad. It's pretty decent. But if you're getting like an orange, it's close to really bad, but not so bad. Okay. And that's how they do their little color scale. Think of like a traffic light, uh, red and green, right? Okay. So just for the record, you'll notice that a lot of the top listings um, when you first sign into the entrepreneur plan will be a lot of A's, okay, a lot of A's and B's. There's a reason why. It's because it uploads all your products um, that were most recent. So usually your most recent products are the ones that got sold recently. And if they got sold recently, there's a good chance there's something good going on with it. Um, not everything, of course, but usually um, having it renewed recently helps your score. Okay, we'll talk more about that in a second. But if you go down, you'll easily notice you'll see a lot more B's and C's or whatever. Um, your shop may look different than mine. You might have a lot more B's, C's, and D's. Okay, maybe some even some F's. But as you get lower and lower, you might see it get worse and worse. Um, only because, again, recency helps your relevancy score. And this is exactly that. Okay, so what I like to do um, for myself, and I want you to do this as well, when you first log in and see this, there's a few different ways you could use this. The first way is saying, okay, which listings need help? Well, obviously the ones all the way toward the bottom probably need the most help, okay? So this is really good to do it this way. You could scroll down all the way to the bottom, okay, and say, okay, these are my stepchildren, right? They're the ones that are not performing as well. So you could easily go to your C listings first, and attack them. And I'll show you how to do that in just a second. Um, and then the B's and then so on as you work your way up. Now, just for the record, these will change positions as you sell items in your shop. If you're a very active shop, such as myself, these will change positions. So whatever's on the bottom may not be in the bottom tomorrow. Um, for example, this may sell um, tomorrow and it may bump up a little bit. Okay, um, so it's not always what's toward the bottom. It's really the scores you're trying to look for, but usually the worst scores are on the bottom. So now that you've identified which ones you want to change, um, you go in the listing. Let me show you how to do that. Let me pick one toward the top, just so I can stay toward the top. Okay, let's pick this. Uh, let's pick the C plus listing right here. Okay, so let me show you what makes up this C plus score. Okay, so you will see these are the things that make it up right over here. And of course, you'll see everywhere in the entrepreneur plan, these, these color cord, you know, these colors, and it pretty much tells you if you're in the green or if you're in the red, again, red and orange, um, not so great. Yellow and greenish are pretty good, right? So when you see red, you're like, uh Oh, what's wrong with this? So let's me walk you through each one. 
So photos used. Etsy has told us, obviously, the more photos, the better. It's probably a really good blanket rule when you're selling online. People can't see your products. Um, they can't feel it, nothing. So having more photos is probably the best thing you could do. And by the way, this is a really old listing of mine, so don't judge me. Um, it's a really, really old listing. I've not touched it in such a long time. But nonetheless, I only have four photos used. Now, is it true that I could still sell something really well with that many photos? Sure it is. But if you're in a position where you're not selling as well you should be including multiple photos you should be including obviously the basic first you know listing photo you should be including um, photos that your customers are you know what questions are they asking when they're looking at your product so on and so forth you know if you're offering options include a color chart a font chart whatever so on and so forth so hopefully you'll have most of these filled out this does definitely help your score tags used now of course there should be no if ands or buts to this i don't want to hear any excuses all 13 tags must be used period um it's just wasted space if you're not okay um and that helps obviously seo helps you get found from more keyword phrases now this is really important this one and again don't judge me this is an old listing but i'm glad you're seeing this because you might find a lot of yours look like this as well tags and title now it's important to make sure that whatever keyword phrases you have in your title okay are also in your tags so when you have them all in your tags right then this number should go higher now here's the thing it's probably going to be very, very hard to get 13 out of 13. So don't, you know, give yourself a hard time if you can get 13 out of 13. But the higher the number, the better. And in this case, it's not so great. Okay. Now, the last but not least, you know, factor to getting an A plus here is being recently renewed. And it shows you how recently renewed you were. Um, so mine was renewed four days ago. It looks like somebody purchased this probably four days ago, or I actually renewed it if it expired. Um, and of course, recency has a lot to do with relevancy. Let me explain. When you are more recent in search, that means you were recently renewed or purchased. That makes you more relevant, which makes you potentially go up to the top of search. Okay. So this has a lot to do with your score. Um, so all these will factor into your A, um, hopefully your A plus listing. If not, then something over here is wrong. Now, does this and this whole thing entirely mean that you will um, get to the top of search? Not necessarily. You have to be using the right keyword phrases, of course. But if you're using the right keyword phrases and these are all are you know in the green, then that's a really good sign. And if you're wondering, how do I know if I'm using the right keyword phrases, then I honestly recommend um, the SEO webinar. It will help you imp implement everything correctly. Okay, let's move on. Um, so I'm also excited about this part, description. Um, so as you may know, you know, um, getting to the top of search is one part of the battle. You have to convince the customer it's, you know, that they want this item, right? It's the right item for them. And the description helps with that. Um, photos help with it as well, but you don't want to overlook the description. So it breaks it down to several things that the team at Marmalade feel that will help your uh, listings convert. So the first one is words, second is sentences, grade level, so on and so forth. If you're confused about what this means, you can go over to the right hand side and put your mouse over this question mark and kind of see for yourself, just in case you forget, just in case you don't want to go back to this video and you you forget, you could see over here. Okay. So, um, a lot of this stuff I really agree with because, um, you have to have a decent amount of words. Now it's not really about the word count per se that makes a listing sold, but this is a good indication that you've put enough information in your description that answers buyers questions, which is really important. Same goes for sentences, okay? Um, the grade level, it shows, if you see here, it says research shows that descriptions, oops, written at a fourth grade reading level perform best regardless of the customer's education. Um, this is true. It has to be simple for them to understand and go through, okay? So the higher the score, the better. Readability, same thing. Um, research shows that if it's a four or higher, it's better. Is it easily readable? Um, and there's a few more that I want you to look at, but if you take a look at these and they're in the green, that's really good. Now, the last two, by the way, um, even though it's in the green, it's small numbers. The smaller the number in this case, the better. Okay, so this doesn't help you with SEO and getting found in um, Etsy search, but it may help you with conversions because that's what we're all about, right? We're fixing our listings all day long. 
We're getting the Marmalade Entrepreneur Plan, all this stuff only because we want to make that sale. So don't forget, don't overlook your descriptions. Okay. Now, this is freaking awesome. Okay. I, I'm in love with this this feature. You'll see throughout this video, I'm in love with several features. This is one of them. So this takes this items, this listing right here, and it shows you the tags you've used. Okay. Again, please forgive me. This is a horrible listing of mine. I've not touched it in probably years since I first listed it. Um, but it's going to show you several things. I'm going to walk you through how you should use this. Okay. So these are your tags that you've used. Again, I have all 13 here. And let me see if I could um, make this smaller so I could see everything. There it is. Okay. So I have all 13 here. Now, title strength is pretty much, um, you, know, so you want your, you want your most, I guess, your best keyword phrases, your best tags, whatever, to be toward the beginning of your title. And this is true for Google SEO, Etsy SEO, and other things. But on Etsy, they tell us, yes, the if you want to be found for this keyword, um, your best keywords that you want to use, put it toward the beginning of the title. Um, now, could you still be found for something toward the end of the title? Sure, but depending on what you really want to go after, I would put it toward the front of the title. So you would see around here the 42%, that means this, this tag, this keyword phrase right here is actually somewhat in the middle of your title. Okay. Um, the word personalized shows up right in the beginning. The word stationary shows up right after probably personalized. Right. And then, um, somewhere in the middle, I have boy stationary. Um, the rest do not show up and that's bad. So using this to make sure that your tags are in your title is a really good thing, but you want to see the title strength in comparison to the Marma meters. Let me explain. Um, you might say, Dio, how do I know which keyword phrases or tags or whatever should be toward the beginning of the title? I'll make sure that they're all in my title, obviously, because you might find that you'll have um, a lot of these in percentages, which means they're all in your title. But which ones should you have toward the beginning of your title? Well, you're going to look over in the Marma meters. Okay, love this tool. Love it, love it. And you say, okay, um, these Marma meters, and I'll go over it with you soon, um, it shows you three little indicators. The first indicator shows engagement score. Second one shows competition score. And the last one shows category. Okay, so the greens are good, remember? Um, the greens and kind of like this weird yellowish green color is good. Um, orange and red are kind of the bad side, right? Red being the worst. So when you look at this, you say to yourself, okay, um, should this be toward the beginning of my title? Now, here's how I would decide. I would make sure the ones with a mixture of green and red or green and orange are toward the beginning. Okay, I'll explain why in just a second. And the ones that are not in your title, okay, because remember I told you not every tag is going to be in your title. You can't fit everything, okay? So the ones toward the bottom should be the ones with the more greens and yellows and this light green. Let me explain why. So when you have these greens, imagine you had something with all greens in it. Greens means very high engagement or... Um, it's a low risk category or low competition. So it's a really good keyword to go after because there's not much people going after it and it has very high engagement. Well, if there's not many people going after it and there's very high engagement, you don't really need, okay, you don't need to put it in your title and your tag, okay? You don't have to. You could just put it in your tag and you probably will still get found because competition was not much. So in order for this to really work, you need to make sure that the competition one, which is the middle one, is green. Okay. Those ones you could keep toward the bottom. The ones toward the top, the competition should be higher. So the red or the oranges. Now let me explain again why, just to make sure I'm very clear. They're the hardest ones to go after. The competitions, there's a lot of competition there. As you can see to the right, the results, right? It's greater than 50,000. So I'm trying to compute with a lot of people. If I'm trying to compete with a lot of people. I want to make sure I do everything I can to make that keyword as strong as possible. Well, how do I do that? I put it toward the beginning of the title. And of course, keep it in my tags, right? But toward the beginning of the title. So the ones you want, 
right? The ones you want on the top here with the highest percentages are the ones that should have either an orange or a red competition score, okay? Now, don't be fooled by maybe lower engagement. Engagement, um, it may be low, but it's low in comparison to the amount of competition. Let me explain. So if you look here, views per week is 81. That's pretty good, especially compared to 4.7. So why is it that this one is low, right, with 81, but this one is very low with only 4.7? Well, obviously, you could see that 4.7 is smaller, but 81 is so much more higher. Shouldn't it be like in the greens or this weird light green color? Well, the reason why it's not is because it's always in comparison to the amount of competition you have. Um, you know, 4.7 views a week is low, but imagine you had nobody else competing, like literally nobody else. It was just you. Then that's really, really good because they'll only find your, your item and you'll get really good results from it. So again, don't be fooled by um, the very high engagement score. It's usually, it could be in comparison to this. So what you wanna focus on is keeping your red and oranges for competition toward the top here with the highest title strength, okay? And your yellows in the middle, your light greens and your dark greens on the bottom, okay? All right, and of course, there's a few different ways you could use this. That's a really, really great way to use it. Also, don't forget, looking at your um, engagement score, you wanna make sure you don't have reds completely across the board. Again, forgive me, this is a very bad listing we're looking at, I haven't touched it in years, um, but looking at a glance, you might say, huh, this one sucks across the board, for example. Why am I using this? Um, and then you might find, okay, I'm gonna switch this tag out for another better tag, okay? More about that in a little bit. I'll show you how to brainstorm and do all that stuff. But I love this section right here. It's just really great to see in detail the type of keyword phrases you're using in your tags. Um, you know, if you're putting it toward the beginning of your title, is it worth putting it toward the beginning of your title or not, so on and so forth. If you're a numbers person, you wanna see these little colors in numbers, here they are, okay? So it's pretty much telling you the exact same thing. And this views per week is really great because you could see obviously how much views um, a certain tag gets. Now, nobody's searching for personalized alone. We know that. They're not typing the word personalized in Etsy search. You're probably using it with a conjunction of another word. So you might say this is irrelevant, but it really isn't. This should also show you that the personalized category on Etsy is a very, very good one, okay? So I love using this section right here. Again, one of my favorite tools to use because of this alone, okay? Um, and of course you can see the results, the ones that are um, pretty low, and then you can compare it to, easily compare it to um, the views per week. And all these seem to be not so great, okay? All right, so let's move on. Um, I showed you the listing scores and how to look inside of it and actually fix your listings, okay? Now let's go to the search thing. Um, we're gonna type in a keyword. Um, let's type in um, personalized, oops, um, wood sign. Okay, just thought of something, you know, right off the bat to show you. It takes a couple, like a minute, maybe less than a minute to load, but this is a great tool and you have part of this in the free version um, and that's great, but I'll show you what you're missing out on when you don't have the entrepreneur plan. You won't see any of these over on the, you know, on the free version. You also won't be able to click any of these and I'll show you how to use that. Okay, a lot of this on this side is blurred out. Um, you also want to be able to see the pricing spread, okay? And again, I'm going to go through this and show you the benefit to using all of these. So, of course, at a glance, if you're a visual person, you could easily see, um, is this keyword phrase worth going after? And if you look here, um, engagement's moderate, competition's high. Again, there's not extreme colors here. I don't see a red in here, so I'm okay. Um, the engagement is pretty decent. And yes, competition's high, but it does not mean I'm going to go against it and not use it. I may still want to use it. Um, and looking at the competition itself, it's 45,000. If you've kind of been around the Etsy block for a while, you'll know that 45,000 is not really that crazy. Okay, there's still a chance for you to kind of, you know, make a, you know, make a path for your items, okay? Um, so looking at this, I say, all right, this is something that I may want to go after. Um, and again, this is a different, 
different ways to use this area. Now, because I have the entrepreneur plan, I can limit it to 100 listings because the next few results will show me 100 listings. If you have the free version, you'll only see 42. There's, um, there's a disadvantage to that. You don't want to just see the first page results because 42 is actually the first page results. You want to be able to see 100, which is like two or three pages, right? So it's, it gives you a more accurate reading of um, average views per week and a few other things, right? So you could make really good decisions for your business based on um, a, big, a better sample, okay? So when you have the entrepreneur plan, you can go to 100. I always defaulted at 100. Now, another thing you could see is if, um, if your listings will be found within for that keyword phrase. Now, of course, I'm not being found for personalized wood sign because I don't sell that. But if I did, I'm hoping to find over here if I have any listings being found. Um, if I don't, I may want to change to 500, which takes a couple minutes for it to load because it's grabbing a lot of data. And then you may still, then you may see that you'll find yours. Okay. Um, you could also use the filter by material, category, etc. Category is really good to see what people are putting their products. Okay. So just consider that. Um, obviously the most popular ones are the ones you want to focus on. All right. So because, well, let me explain why, because if you put yourself into a category, those categories are used as tags in your listing. If you're putting yourself in the wrong category, you're at a disadvantage. Your competition is, you know, your competition right here is using the better tags um, with their category, right? Um, they might have plants and edibles in their tags, housewares, home decor, etc. but you won't because you're putting it in supplies. So make sure you're using this to see where you should be putting your items. You could obviously check manually on Etsy where you should be putting your items by checking your competition, where they put it, but that's a lot of manual labor. I can just type this in and easily see where people are putting it. That's why I love this, okay? So I leave this at 100 and then I check here. So I look um, at the average views per week. I see it's 47, so that's not bad. Again, these numbers right here are pretty much filtered into here, okay? So you can see that at a glance or you can look at it in detail, okay? And you say, huh. You know, remember, it's all in comparison to competition and say, okay, 47 views a week. That's not bad. If I was on the first page, I'd probably get an average 47 views a week, um, give or take. Um, but what you want to do is look down below. Okay. This is really important. Okay. And say, okay, so if I'm getting, if I should, if I go after this keyword phrase and I get found for it, if I'm getting 47 average views a week, um, it obviously sounds worth it, but are they really going to get 47 average views a week? Let's take a look. The average views a week is compiled with the first hundred, um, items that are being analyzed. Okay. They, that normally takes the first hundred items and says, okay, how much average views a week are they getting? And it's getting 47, but those hundred items might have some issues. Okay. Um, meaning they may have, um, some really, really high numbers in there that got, uh, how do you say this? That got views based on social media and other ways. They might've played a stupid, you know, like for like game on Facebook and they got a million different views. So what you're going to do is look down here and say, okay, is, is this the norm? Is 47 views average a norm? So you can see several in the hundreds, right? Several in the forties and fifties and twenties and thirties. So yes, it does seem like the norm is obviously some that are higher. Okay. Which we'll go over that in a second, but I like to see that. Okay. It's not, it's not like one item that has 6,000 views and the rest have like three. That means, you know, that this one is not accurate because it's taking the average. Okay. So, but over here, it seems pretty good, the spread. And then I take a look and say, okay, if the higher, if the higher numbers were really, really high, okay, I could take a look over here in the favorites and the favorite percentages to see if that person drove it through SEO. Now listen up. Okay. This is really important. So I could take a look and say, all right, um, if it was really high, I look at the favorites and say, okay, they're getting around 33. What about somebody else that's also in the same kind of views range? They're getting 17. This one's a little bit low, I'm getting 11, okay? But if you want to do the math, the math is already done for you here. Favorites pretty much tells you, the favorites percentage tells you, hey, are people engaging with this listing like they should be? So if you look around here, um, it's about 8%, okay, the, the views. Okay. So that's good. But if you look below, are they around that same percentage? And they are. So that means these people 
right here, okay, are getting much higher views than the rest of them, okay, probably for other SEO reasons, meaning they're probably gonna, they probably are using another keyword that's really getting them a lot of views, okay? Because these views are not based on this keyword. These views are based on this item, okay? So if I know that this these views were not brought in by some crazy, you know, uh, plot to get views, which is, you know, throwing it in a group of a million people so people could click on the link or anything like that. If I know it based on the average favorite percentage, they're, they're pretty much average. And I know that they're getting this high views because of another for SEO reason. Okay. So then you could go over and hover over tags. Now, this is a great thing about the entrepreneur plan. You could do it all. You could do all this work in this little area right here and say, okay, so personalized wood, uh, personalized wood sign is actually not a bad, um, keyword phrase to use. I love that, but I could go ahead in here and say, huh, this person is getting much more high views. They're getting a decent amount of favorites compared to everybody else. So we know it's, they're not bringing it in, you know, some with crazy reasons. Some look at their tags and say, how else are they getting their views? Now, this is a great brainstorming activity. You could say, okay, um, you guys obviously pick tags that are relevant to your, you know, your items. But if you look here and say, okay, personalized name, sign wood, established sign, name, family sign, etc. You take what works for your items and use those. Uh, keyword phrases and type them in here and do the same exercise all over again to kind of gather um, other keyword phrases that can work for you. Okay. Cause something's bringing in these views. Obviously they're probably being found on the top of the search page with, for other um, keyword phrases. And that's great. But you want to also go after those as well, especially if that item matches yours. If you're selling um, a name family established sign, then that's great. Okay. So hovering over makes it really easy. Seeing the percentage of favorites um, kind of gives you the a okay. Like, Hey, these views are accurate, okay, that they're not driving in these views based on some random, you know, posting links, like for like game, any of those silly things, okay. Um, you'll, you'll know that if the percentages are similar to the ones with much lower views. And they are, you see that they are. All right. So let's move on. Um, if you go down here at a glance, you can see the first hundred listings and what they're using for their tags. Great brainstorming tool. You could easily look and say, okay, um, what, what am I not going after? Well, um, obviously I sell a wood personalized sign, but I did not think of wedding gift, huh? They make great wedding gifts. So this is something you should kind of write down, um, do a little research, go after um, to make sure you're using the right keyword phrases, right long tail keyword phrases with the word wedding gift. Because wedding gift is kind of general, but um, if you could find long tail keyword phrases with the word wood in it, um, or personalized and wedding gift, that'd be great. But looking at this saying, okay, a lot of people are using this. It's a really great thing for me to consider. Um, and so on and so forth. You can see quite a few things. Anniversary gift. Ah, oh, that makes sense. Of course, if it's a family name sign, it's a great for anniversary gift. So this is a great uh, brainstorming tool um, for you. You could easily see at a glance, um, of course, the views, in, uh, the views per item, you could see it, but also favorites, right? The percentage, the average rank these tags get. Okay. And how I normally use this is I quickly look at the tags to see what I'm missing out on easily. Okay. I want to make sure that this, these tags are getting a decent amount of views. And these are all within the same type of range. Okay. There's nothing really drastic about these views. You're not seeing some with two and then some with a hundred, right? So they're all within the same range, which is good. Okay. So they're all relevant. So, and again, you could also see average price. Okay. We'll talk about pricing in just a second, but this is why I like to use this tool. Now jumping up again, we're still in the search area, looking at the pricing. If you're, if you're kind of new and you're not sure how to price, there's two different things I'm going to tell you. One, you should, um, price, um, according to what things cost you. You wanna make a profit. That's the biggest thing why we're doing this. It's not about really sales. It's about making money in your pocket, you know? So you wanna make sure that you're pricing correctly. Um, and I'll provide a link down below for you for um, my resource library. You can sign up for my resource library and get my free 
free pricing um, webinar. It helps you price um, your products. Now, that's number one. Number two, you also want to take a look at this. You want to make sure you're pricing within the market. Now, of course, if you're much higher end than a lot of these people, then you could probably price higher. But just understand where the market is so you know what customers are kind of paying for it, okay? So you look here, the biggest clump I see is right over here. So when you look here, you're saying $25 and eight items have it. You're looking here, $28, seven items have it, right? So 25, 28, um, $30, eight items have it, 32, etc. So you're seeing the range of what people are willing to pay for it, okay? And this could help you with pricing strategies later, okay? But again, first and foremost, you must make sure you price to actually make a profit. All right, so this tool really jam-packed. Um, you can obviously check multiple keyword phrases um, and see where you fall, if it's worth using um, in your titles and tags, um, easily by looking at here, okay, and here, and then checking down below like I mentioned over here, okay? Now let me show you the storm tool. There is one simple way I like to use it. And I want to share this way with you because I think you're going to get a lot of value out of this. So when you're in the storm tool, you click new storm. Now you're sitting, now a storm um, <laughs> is pretty much going to flood you with keyword ideas. Okay. And that's what you want. If you're in the brainstorming kind of mood and you're like, oh, how do I, how do I name this product I just made? Okay. Um, let's call it um, a baby headband. Okay. Um, baby headband and you probably have a, a few other keywords you could probably think of but I'm gonna do this for now you made this baby headband and you're like what other words can I use you know and there's many different ways you could brainstorm guys okay I showed you it in here where you can look up other people's tags but this is really gonna hit you hard with a lot of different keyword phrases um, also in my SEO webinar I show you different ways to brainstorm as well okay which is really important but this is also another way so if you click all of a sudden you're going to get all these things. Okay. Now here's what you're going to do. This is how I use it. Okay. When I have a new category, new product, I go through here and these are um, generated to help you give you ideas and you're going to take what you like and put it in your bucket. Okay. So let me show you. All right. So you can look at these little marmor meters. It's really important before you decide what goes into here. Okay. You don't want something. Definitely. You don't want something with low. You don't want something with red and red or orange and red. Okay, these are bad, bad, like forget this part for now, the category part. You don't want red and red. You absolutely don't. I'm okay with green and red or a light green and red, right? But you definitely don't want red and red. It's probably um, not worth going after. So I'm going to cross it out. See what I just did there? Okay, this one has very low engagement, very low competition. Low competition is good, by the way, because there's not much people competing for it. But low engagement, meh, I'm going to cross that off. Okay. Oh, look at this one. High engagement, moderate competition. That's pretty good. And of course, there's low risk of category. I'm going to put this to this side. I'm pretty much saving it in my little bucket, right? I have a little bucket. I'm saving it. So I'm going to go through all these and decide what's going to go in my bucket. I'll show you what to do in a second with the bucket. So I look here, I see very high engagement and very high competition. Obviously, I look at the keyword phrases, baby headbands. That doesn't mean I shouldn't be putting it in my bucket. I'm probably going to use that keyword phrase anyway. It's exactly what I sell. Um, so don't be scared to be using these this type of green and red situation. I'm putting it in my bucket. This one, a green, high engagement, um, very high competition baby blanket. I don't sell a baby blanket. I'm not going to use that. So I'm taking that away. Uh, remember, I'm looking for baby headband related items, baby bow headband, um, low engagement, very high competition. This is kind of scary because it's not quite red yet, but it's almost there. Okay. So it looks like this bow type of category may not be worth going after. Now there's no right and wrong here. You can still put it in your bucket and I'll show you what to do later. But for the purpose of this exercise, I'm going to take it off. Okay, red and red, I'm going far away. Um, moderate engagement, not bad. High competition, I'll take it. It's a gift, right? And so on and so forth. So as you start to, you know, really build this up, let me show you how I'm going to do that. I'm going to build it up right now so I could kind of... Okay, I see an orange and orange. Okay, I'm building it up and again, choosing keywords that not you're not just looking at here. You have to make sure the keywords actually match your item. Okay, or items. Then what I want you to do is take these, okay, obviously these are really great tags, but you want to make sure that you're using them correctly and you want to make sure that 
you turn these into keyword phrases for your title that people are searching for. Okay, so now I have this bucket. Let me rephrase that. I have this bucket. You hit save. Make sure the bucket's saved. Okay, now you have to do the due diligence. Okay, for people that have my SEO webinar, use the SEO webinar. Okay, this will help you now um, to then decide how do I use these tags to make sure I'm phrasing them correctly in my titles and my tags. Okay, because the word the phrase, for example, gold baby headband may be a phrase that's really, really popular. Great. But if it isn't, you want to make sure that you kind of rearrange this or try to figure out something similar to gold baby headband that has higher, um, how do I say this, that has, that, that buyers are searching for because you want to make sure you're using phrases that buyers are searching for. Okay. After you have this bucket, you check each one to make sure that buyers are searching for it. Okay, again, use the SEO webinar for this tip, and then you could then apply it to your titles and tags. Okay, if you don't have time right now, the best part is it's already saved. You can hit save again just in case you forget. When you go back to your storm, there it is. You can say, okay, let me go back to my storm today. I have time. I'm going to go here and, and, you know, do my due diligence and research these to make sure that I could be using them. Um, in my titles and tags. Obviously, there's going to be some that are like no brainers. Baby shower, obviously, right? Because it's such a simple keyword phrase that you don't have to really research that. Baby shower will automatically be one of those phrases that people will search for. What's important for you to do is make them into long tail keyword phrases, okay? Because some of these will be short. You see that, right? So again, use the SEO webinar to help you make it into long tail keyword phrases so then you're ready to put it into your listing. Using the storm tool alone will help you brainstorm at a quick glance all the, it's like pretty much doing this search thing, right? But not one at a time. It's doing it in like a storm manner if you could, you know, like the, the title suggests. So that's why I absolutely love it. You could easily go knock out a whole bunch of keyword phrases and see the engagement and the competition score immediately. Then you have this big bucket of things that you could say, all right, let me make them into long tail keyword phrases that make sense. Okay. That buyers are searching for. I absolutely love this tool. Huge, huge time saver. Okay. So let's go to this comparison tool. Okay. This is really cool. Um, because you may say, Hey, Dahlia, I have several different keyword phrases that are similar, but I kind of want to, you know, get them together and see who's better. Okay. Because you may have, I mean, Etsy doesn't give us that much space to put in keyword phrases. So you want to make sure that you are utilizing the space correctly. So let's go into the, the, the wood type of business, personalized wood sign hit enter. Okay. Then I'm going to show you what's going to come up in just a second. I'm going to say, um, custom wood sign. Remember you put similar ones to see which ones are better over the others. And then I'm going to put, you don't have to do all four if you don't want to, but it's nice to, you don't lose anything by doing so. I'm going to put a uh, personalized wood. Um, let me think personalized wood frame. No, that doesn't make sense. Wood sign, wood decor. There you go. And I'm going to put, oh, let me hit search. And I'm going to put personalized wood, wood art. I don't know. I just made that up. So <laughs> just the purpose of this, we probably even ignored this one and just takes a, you know, a few moments and you'll see this generate. Okay. Again, what I love about entrepreneur plan, you can immediately see in color everything. Okay. Um, which is kind of cool because a lot of people are visual people. It makes it easier. And if you're not visual people, it's okay. The numbers are here for you. Okay. So, um, I'm comparing these side by side because again, they're very similar. I could be using them for one product and I want to see which is probably a better one to use. Does that mean I won't be using the other ones? No, I could still use them, but it's important for me to understand which ones are more stronger phrase for me. Okay. So looking at it at a glance, I, um, Look here, personalized wood sign gives me moderate engagement, high competition. Not bad. Okay, not bad. Um, looking down here, if you want to take a look um, even deeper, you'll see the 45,000 results. Okay, obviously analyze 100 listings because that's what I always pick when I do it. Um, and we'll get to the bottom a little bit later. So when you look here, custom wood sign, low engagement, wah, wah, right? Very high competition. So we're more in the orangey red, right? So that we're more in the um, warmer tones, which I don't like. 
Okay. Um, so this one, uh, not so great. Okay. Um, if you look down here, where is it? Hold on. Ah, there it is. Average views per week. It's 80, let's say 81. This one was 747. So this one has a higher amount of views per week. So you might say, that's really good, Dahlia. But the results are much, much higher. Now, uh, Marmalade doesn't tell you the exact number if it's over 50,000, but you could easily go to Etsy.com, search for it and see. But it's pretty much telling you, hey, this is, you know, kind of a crazy um, thing to go after, especially with how much competition it has. Um, and it's not particularly low engagement, but it's low compared to the competition. Does that mean you shouldn't use it? Well, no, you may still want to, but when you're comparing it, you might want to use this one beforehand, right? You might want to use this one first. Now look at this one, uh, moderate, very high. This is kind of scary, right? Um, cause they're very high, uh, moderate's not so bad. If this was orange, I would be really, I would be like, nope, this is not going to be used. Uh, but this may be worth it. The average use per week is really high. Look at this. Um, hold on. There it is, 100. So this may be worth going after because it's moderate, not low, okay? And then looking at this one, again, this is to help you compare side by side, which is really nice. Um, looking at this one, personalized, I think, wood, what I put in here? Wood art, I think. <laughs> I just made that one up. Um, I, You have moderate, but then high competition. These are not so bad, similar to this one. But I just made that keyword phrase up, so I'm not sure if I should even go after this one, okay? Um, so at a glance, I love this because you could easily see if you're trying to decide between um, three or four keyword phrases that you want to use in this one listing, you might say, huh, which one's better? You know, or how have these changed over time? There's one tip I want to give you, okay? Um, you could easily, if you, if you have a PC or Mac, it works either way, you could screenshot this, okay? On a PC, I just hit my keyboard, it says print screen. Okay, so on the top next to the backspace button or the delete button, and you could take that and save it in a folder, okay? And this is really cool because then if you keep doing it to all your keyword phrases, you'll have them four at a time, comparison, right? And you could go to that folder easily and at a glance quickly look at these screenshots, right? Instead of having to generate this all the time if you forget, and have at a glance the scores, Okay, that's really cool because I don't have to keep going back to the Marmalade um, tool. I love the tool, obviously, but it takes some time, obviously, if you keep searching for all your phrases. Doing this, screenshotting it and putting it into a folder is kind of like a, you know, a life hack, and you know, an Etsy hack. So then you could, at a glance, go back to it and say, okay, let me look at the ones that relate to my personalized family wood sign. Let me look at the ones that relate to my kids room wood sign. Let me look at the one, you know what I'm saying? So you could have them in bundles and you could say, all right. And of course, if time changes over time, right? I mean, sorry, that made no sense. If um, these change over time, you could look again and it's important to double check these maybe every six months um, if you have the time to say, okay, you know, custom wood sign has made a comeback. <laughs> you know, people have gotten out of the competition of it and is gotten much lower, which is really good for me. Or you might say, wow, um, engagement went really, really high for personalized wood sign and competition got low for whatever reason. So updating it um, would be good. And this is pretty much a life hack in a way that you don't have to write these down. A lot of, a lot of people actually keep like little Excel spreadsheets, which is fine. Do what works for you. This is like the, the lazy man method. Screenshot, put it away. I love it. Okay. And again, you can see the average views per week down here. Okay, sorry, average views are down here. Okay, um, and again, pricing, which is really interesting. All right, um, and it shows you really nice top tags for each of the ones that are here. Okay, and of course, you could click on the top items if you wish. Okay, very, very cool tool. Now, let me show you this tool that I absolutely love. Now, just for the record, this is a tracking tool and you are able to put four keyword phrases you want to track. Let me give you a heads up of how you should be using this. You should be using four different category of keyword phrases. You should not be putting similar phrases. Um, you should not be putting personalized stationery, personalized note cards, personalized 
you know, custom note cards. It's really the same thing. If you have different categories in your shop, put that in there. Put the most popular phrase for what you sell. Baby headbands is a very general popular phrase. This is important, okay? You wanna put general phrases in here and I'll show you why that cover a lot of your product. So for me, I did this a long time ago um, and haven't updated it, but um, you, put, you would put for me personalized stationery, personalized notepads, because notepads are a little bit different, um, luggage or backpack tags, right? And wedding note cards, what, whatever, different categories, okay? And I'm gonna show you why I'm telling you this because you're gonna see quite a few things here. I love this tool. So you're gonna see results first. It's pretty much gonna tell you over time how much results, like listings, there were. Now, if I'm not mistaken, um, if you put this in today, okay, let me see if the bottom one has loaded. It's not loaded yet. I, I put it in earlier today and it's not loaded yet. But you have to check back, I think said um, in a few days to get the data. But when you put a new keyword phrase in, right, because you'll find these being empty when you first come here, you will find that there's like no history. Okay, I've had Marmalade Entrepreneur Plan probably a little bit before September 19th. I probably didn't use this tool the moment I got it, but I at least had it since then, 2015. So... <clears throat> So what I want to tell you is that when you first put the keyword phrase in here, you're not going to have all this data. It only will track the data from the moment you put it in, if I'm not mistaken. Maybe the guys over at Marmalade have figured something out, some coding, you know, witchcraft that allows it to go far back. So you may find that. I'm not sure. Nonetheless, even if you have to wait for some time to pass, what you're going to find over time is saying, okay, how many listings are, have there been that changed? Let me go here and show you note cards. Back in 2015, there were 20,000 listings. Now there's 27,000. Okay. So 20 to 27. That's a big difference. So what does that mean? More people, um, well, maybe not, maybe not more people, but more listings are being created. Oh my God, more competitions be flooding the market for this personalized note card situation, right? That's good to know. It's really good to know. So I know like if, you know, in general, if sales are slow, don't blame, don't blame Etsy, right? There's other things that have a lot to do with it. There's a lot more people flooding the market. Um, now that's listings, but if you look down here, comp shops competing, you have to also notice that um, the change in shops that are competing back in, um, ah, where is it? September, 2015, it was 63 shops. And again, this will fluctuate by the way, guys. So right now there's around 60. So we're looking at 62 to around, oh, sorry, 59. That's the most recent, but somewhere in April or March it was 55. Okay, or 54, it dropped. So here's why this is important. You're gonna see at a glance what has happened. Somewhere around here, shops have left for whatever reason. You see that drop? And it's slowly starting to pick back up, okay? So if I'm over here twirling my thumbs wondering, wh why am I getting less sales? What, what's, what's whatever, what's going on? Why am I being kicked out of the top spot of search? What's going on? You look at this and say, Remember, for your major keyword phrases, I would look at personalized note cards or personalized uh, stationery and say, huh, more listings are coming in compared to here, you know, and more shops, I'm sorry, compared to here, more shops are also, you know, all of a sudden coming out of the floodgates. Like, where are they coming from? That could probably help you figure out why business has changed for you. Really important because since we're selling on Etsy, we sell with multiple people. When people type in a keyword phrase to hopefully find a product like yours, they're gonna find other people's products too. So knowing who's with you in the world of Etsy is really important. That's why I love this tool, absolutely. Um, and again, it's not a tool that you, you would use every day, it's over time and say, hmm, let me see you know, how, how the trend is going. Okay, so that's results and shops competing. Um, looking at average and median price is really important because you wanna see, I like to look at the average, but you wanna see pretty much are people slowly increasing their price or slowly decreasing it. Um, if you look um, here for, where is this? Personalized stationery with an A, it's misspelled. Um, you will see um, it was much lower here and it started to go up in price, okay? If you look at this one, again, you're gonna have different keyword phrases in here. Look, pricing for personalized stationery in general, this is a really good keyword phrase for me to be after was fairly high. That was the average price point. That may mean a few things. That may mean people were priced higher, obviously, but it was the average, um, average of the hundred listings. And, but generally, yes, it was a lot higher. 
as you see, over time, prices start to get lower. Why do you use this tool? Well, this is how I use it. Um, look at it and say, huh, uh, my market, my fellow competitors are lowering their prices. Um, and people that either were higher price left the market or have lowered. Um, this may make this may mean you um, need to price lower if you're not doing so well. I personally am doing fine, so I'm not going to price lower. Um, the price right now on average is around $16, $17. I'm priced at $18. It's only a dollar higher, but still, um, I'm doing still fine, so I'm okay with not lowering. If I wanted to, I probably could, you know, be around where my competitors are, which is probably a smart tactic, um, but I have no interest in doing that right now. You may. You may look at this average and medium price and say, huh, over time, my... Um, my competitors are lowering. They're really trying to, you know, go after what the market's saying. And you also might not have this much history when you first start it, but even if you look at the average price and say, huh, the average price is 16, I'm way above that. And to be honest with you, I don't, I don't have any reason why I'm above it. Like I'm not that much greater than everybody else. And you should be really lowering your price if you want to make those sales. Okay. That's how I use that. Um, the average views per week, um, of course, you want to see over time how this keyword has been performing. Um, back here, no, ignore this. This seems to be like a little, um, you know, error of some sort, a glitch. But if you look here, you had 33 views average per week for that keyword phrase, and now it's 42. Not bad. It's picking up. So you want to see how your industry is doing. I love this tool, guys, this tracking tool. This is what it tells you in a glance. Um, so it's doing really well. You may find over time that yours may be going down. What will that tell you? That tells you uh, you should get the hell out of that market. Potentially, I'm not saying that, but that must not, must not might be crossing your mind. Or if you're looking at it going higher, you might say, huh, let me really put the pedal to the metal. People are looking for this type of stuff. You may obviously find during certain times um, that it gets higher and lower, right? During holiday seasons, what have you, um, especially depending on the type of product that you sell, okay? So this is how I use this tracking tool. Really jam-packed with information, really good to understand your place in the market um, when you look at these four things, okay? Now, the last but not least tool, um, really, really sweet and really awesome, is the trending tags on Etsy. If I'm not mistaken, the guys update these very often. It's a system that updates it, the coding, um, but it gets updated often um, with the top trending tags on Etsy. Um, now, this, of course, really easy to use, but I'll explain it. You, If you find something here that is something that you sell, like that relates to what you sell, then why aren't you going after that market even more? that market, not just the tags itself, not just, oh, let me use the word inspirational. Yes, you could use it, but it's not that simple. I want you to look at this and say, okay, um, bridal party, bridesmaid gift, bridesmaid, why is this going up, wedding? It's probably because we're in wedding season right now. So if you are in the wedding category or kind of want to be or whatever, you know, increase your listings. Do you have items that you have not listed recently yet? List them up. Um, if you have listings that haven't got sold in a while, renew them, so on and so forth. This is what this tells me is how I use it and it's how I want you to use it. Um, so don't hesitate to look through this and say, not only what tags or keywords are trending right now, but how could you, um, how could you take advantage of it? right? Um, if it relates to your market. For bohemian earrings, it's not really related to my market. I can't do anything about it. But bridal party, bridesmaids, gifts, etc. Let me really ramp up my, and of course, you want to do it sooner than later. You want to really ramp up my wedding collection type of items or change my SEO with certain items that are not getting found, period, and really target the bridesmaid gift market or so on and so forth. So this is how you're going to use this. I absolutely love it. Another thing I want to point out to you guys before I let you go is um, having the entrepreneur plan. Again, you get a 14-day free trial to test this out. Why wouldn't you do that? Click the link down below is that not only do you get these awesome freaking tools, which by the way, no other tool out there does all this, okay? Um, you will also get from the Marmalade team um, the high engagement keyword emails weekly, okay? Um, so how awesome is that? Let me explain what that means. You'll get a weekly email that shows you high engagement keywords. That's what you want. That's what you want. You want to know 
often you want somebody to do the work for you. What are these, what are these uh, high engagement words? Because some may relate to you, some may not, and that's fine. You discard the ones that don't relate to you. Like me, I won't care about the jewelry ones, etc. But they've done the work for you to say, okay, here are the high engagement ones, Dahlia, do what you will with them. And what you're going to do with them is obviously take them, of course, um, see the competition, see what um, items in your you know, your shop are not getting found at all and change the SEO on that one because you don't want to change the ones that are getting found. They're really good. You know, don't fix something that's not broken. Change the ones that are not getting found. Using their high engagement emails is pretty much does this type of work, right? Um, but they do it for you. Okay. Um, there's still some work to do with them because you want to make sure that you apply it correctly, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but I absolutely love that. And of course, they also have a Facebook group that you could join um, that's for free as well. Absolutely love that as well. Really, really supportive team, the, the Marmalade guys, okay? Now, again, I'm going to wrap this up by saying if you want the Marmalade Entrepreneur Plan, go ahead and get it. It's 14 free days I'm going to give you with the link, special link down below. If you already have Marmalade, if you still click on the link and then sign into your account, you'll automatically get it 14 for 14 days, okay? So you don't have to have no account to do it. But if you don't have an account, still use a link down below, sign up for a new account, a regular free one, okay? And it will give you 14 free days of the entrepreneur plan. So no matter what, click the link to get that. If you are looking to really take this a step further and saying, okay, Dahlia, I got some really great keyword phrases, all this good stuff, but you wanna make sure you apply it correctly. That's the other name of the game. You wanna make sure that you're applying it correctly, optimizing it in your titles and tags to get found. Then I'm also gonna leave a link down below for you for the SEO webinar. Has truly changed people's lives completely. And you be doing yourself a favor if you got it, okay? Um, you could check my Facebook group for the thousands and thousands upon reviews of people that absolutely love it has changed our lives, like literally changed our lives. Um, people have quit their jobs, um, their full-time jobs and do this now full-time. Um, they have increased their revenue by a hundred, 200, 300, 400%. I'm not even making this up guys. This is straight from these people's mouths, screenshots and all. Okay. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I really want to sit down and make this for you guys because I feel like a lot of us don't know um, the benefits of using the Marmalade Entrepreneur Plan. Or if you have used it and didn't know how to use it and you kind of got discouraged, I hope this gets you back on the you know, bandwagon. So you could utilize this to the best of your advantage because this is what I use for my shop. Okay. I get in here, several different things I use. Um, I even use it during shop critiques. Okay. This is an invaluable tool for me. I have to have it. And if you're serious about your business, serious about your Etsy shop, I think you would also benefit from it. Okay. If you have any questions, let me know in the Facebook group and I'll answer the best I can. Thanks so much guys. Bye.